Here we have a rational equation we're trying to solve for y. And the first thing we're going to want to do is factor. Okay? So the thing is on this one, they're pretty much factored out as far as we can go. But this 28, I want to think about what goes into 28. 7 and 4, right? So I can change this to a 7 and a 4. All right? So one of the things I want to do before I um, solve for y is, <laughs> excuse me, I want to um, find a common denominator. Okay? What would be my common denominator here? You want each factor to be represented once. So we already have a 4 here. We have a 4 here, so we want that represented once, right? We want a 7 because that's represented once. And then what's the other one that's represented once? Y plus 2. Okay, do you guys see how I found that? We want every factor to be represented once, okay? So we have 4 times 7 times y plus 2. And that's going to be our common denominator in this case. Okay, I'm going to leave it like this, okay, just for, to make it easier. I'm going to multiply each of my terms in this by this common denominator. So I'm going to multiply it by 4, 7, and y plus 2. Well, we're going to cancel some things out here in a minute, okay? I'm going to minus 3 over y plus 2 times this again. Equals 9 over 4 times 7. Yep, you're going to go through and cancel some stuff out now, okay? So, look at the first one, the first term. What can I cancel out of that one? A 4, okay? So, I am left with 3 times 7 times y plus 2 now. What can I cancel out of the second term? y plus 2. So, I'm left with 3 times 4 times 7. Okay, what can I cancel out of the last one? 4 and 7. So I'm left with 9 times y plus 2. Okay? Okay, so now, let's simplify all this out. What's 3 times 7? 21. So I'm going to change that to a 21, and I'm going to multiply that through this binomial. What do I have? 42. Good. What is 3 times 4 times 7? Uh, yep, which is? 84. Good. Okay, and then the next one you're going to? Yep, 9y plus 18. we got to solve for y. Because I told you to. Ha, ha, ha. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So I can put these two together, right? So I'll have 21y minus 42 equals 9y plus 18. Hold on. 42 minus 84 is 42. Mm-hmm. Add 42 to both sides. Yep. Okay, and then you have 9y plus 60 and 21 over here. Now what? Minus 9y. I'm going to scroll this down a little. Minus 9y. So I have 12y equals 60. Yep. Divide by 12, so y is 5. Well, there's a lot of steps. There's a lot of steps. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy.
Okay, so on this one, once again, we need to find a common factor. But before I even go on, I'm just going to put w over 1 because our 1 is our denominator in this case, okay? So, it's already factored for us. You can't simplify it any more than that. So, what would our common denominator be in this case? W minus 1. So, I want to multiply each of these by W minus 1. So, basically, I can get rid of this 1. It's just a 1, right? So, what's W times W? W squared. And W times negative 1? Minus W. Okay? Here, this cancels, right? So, I'm left with a positive W. What cancels on this side? Yep. Okay. Okay, so first of all, these two can go together. What happens to both of those? They cancel out. So I have w squared equals 4w minus 3. Now, we got a w squared. That tells me I have a quadratic, and I need to use the box method to solve for that. So before I can even do that, I need to put them all on one side. So, to get this 4w to the other side, I'm going to subtract it, right? And to get this negative 3 to the other side, I'm going to add it. I subtracted 4w from both sides, so I get this. Okay, because I need to move it to the other side. Subtract 4w. And I need to add 3 to both sides to get that to the other side. So that's how I got that. Then you use the box. So let's make a box. We got W squared here and a 3. So multiply that out. We got 3W squared. Yep, it would be 1 and 3. That's our only option, but which one's negative? Oh, so this should be a 3, by the way. Oh, only one of them. Oh, yeah, both. You're right. They're both negative because it has to add up to be a negative 4w. So we got negative 3w here and negative 1w here. Since they're both negative here, I need to make sure they're negative on the outside too, okay? Okay, so what can I take out of the top line? A w. How about the bottom line? 1. Left side. Right side. 3. So... My factors are w minus 1 and w minus 3 equals 0. Yep. So your final answer, if you set both of these equal to 0 and solve for w, you have w equals 1 and 3. So, on this one, first step we've got to do is factor the one that's not factored yet. And that's this one right here, right? So, what would be my factors for that one? x minus 5 and x plus 5, using the difference of squares. Okay? So, looking at that, I need to have each of my factors represented once for what I'm going to multiply by. So what do I have? x minus 5 and x plus 5 is what I'm going to multiply everything by. Okay? So let's do that. We have x minus 5 over x plus 5 times this. And do the same thing for the second term. A lot of writing. I like the next step of this when you get to actually start crossing things out. That's fun. It's 
like checking things off your list. Okay. So we got it set up. Let's start crossing them out. This is my favorite part. Cross, cross. So I got that done. So my two factors here that I'm left with is x minus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, and this one I can cancel this one. And I have x plus 5 times x plus 5. And this one's even better because I can cancel them both. So I have 100. Okay. Once you get to this point, what do you think you're going to have to do to solve it? Yeah. Foil it. Yep. Or box method multiply if you want to do it that way. Whatever way you want to multiply these together, you need to do that. Okay? Yep. So eventually, yes, it will. Okay, so first we're going to FOIL or use the box method to multiply these two sets of numbers together. Okay, so let's, I'm going to change my color here, use purple. X times X is what? Okay, and then I have negative 5X, and then again, negative 5X for doing FOIL. And then the last one is negative 5 times negative 5 plus 25. Minus, don't forget that minus sign. And you're going to put this all into a big parenthesis because that's going to be important later on. Okay, so once again, x times x is x squared. Then we have 5 times x. And then another 5 times x. And then 5 times 5 is 25. Equals 100. Yep. So let's simplify this out. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25 minus x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals 100. Now, what happens with this second polynomial because we have this negative sign in front? It a right, so everything inside of here becomes negative yeah. because we have this negative in front. I'm going to change this to a positive. Okay? So what cancels out? The x, the x squareds cancel and the, and the 25 cancel. What are we left with? Yep, because negative 10x plus a negative 10x is negative 20x equals 100. Yeah, it does because we have this negative sign. We are subtracting this whole second polynomial. Yeah, but x squared. Okay, so we're left with this, and if we solve by dividing both sides by negative 20, we have x equals negative 5. Look at our denominators. What is our common denominator going to be? Yep, 2p plus 3 and 2p minus 3. Okay? So I need to multiply each of our terms by that. Okay? So go ahead and write that out. That's the first term. A lot of writing. Okay? But, like I said, once you get it all written out, then comes the fun part of crossing everything out. Okay? So on the first term, what can I cancel out? Yeah, I can get rid of that. So I am left with 2p times 2p minus 3. 
minus the second one, what can I cancel out? Okay, so then I'm minus 2p times 2p plus 3. And then the last one is just what it says here. So we're going to have to FOIL that. Okay. So what do I have when I multiply these together? 4p squared minus... 6p, right? And here I have minus, because it's a negative, minus 4p squared minus 6p. Okay, yeah, so if we multiply all this out, let's, let's foil it out. We have 2p times 2p, which is 4p squared. Okay, 2p times negative 3 is negative 6p. And then positive 3 times 2p is plus 6p. And then this would be a negative 9, right? Yeah, these two cancel each other out. What else cancels each other out over here? Yeah, those will cancel each other out, right? So we're left with negative 12p equals 4p squared minus 9. Okay, so it's a quadratic. We've got something to the second. I need to get everything to the same side. Yep, plus 12p to both sides. So I have 0 equals 4p squared plus 12p minus 9. So everybody... What do we do when we have a quadratic to solve? Box. Four p squared and negative nine. So what are those two multiplied to each other? Negative thirty-six p squared. So what goes into negative thirty-six p that are equal to twelve? Well, one of them has to be negative and one has to be positive. So that won't work, right? Because that would cancel each other out. Well, one has to be negative because we have a negative 9 here. See, remember when we multiplied these together, we have negative 36? Yeah, but it equals a positive. Yes, we're looking for a positive 12. So, but if I use 6 and 6 and one of them being negative, add those together, what do you get? Zero. So that can't be it. 3 and 12? 3 and 12 doesn't work either, right? Because we need to end up being 12. 4 and 9? We don't have anything, do we? No. So guess what? The box doesn't work. You have to use the quadratic formula on this one. So I'm not going to make you guys go through that. But just write down quadratic formula for this one. Okay? I'm not going to make you do that. But you know what you have to do to solve for that. So... We're looking at number one for the worksheet, and what we're looking at, it, let's just read it. Working alone, Shanice can pick 40 bu bushels of apples in six hours, and Cody can pick the same amount in eight hours. What, if they work together, how long would it take them? Okay? So, what we're going to do, first of all, we know that Shanice can do it in how long? Six hours, right? And Cody can pick them in how many hours? Eight hours. And we want we are looking for w how long it takes them to do it to to pick the apples together. So what we're gonna do is find out the rate of what they're picking in one hour. So so we're gonna ignore the forty because we're just finding out how much how much time it takes them to to pick 40, so we don't have to worry about that. 
So the rate for one hour for this one is one over six, right? She can pick a sixth of them in one hour. Okay, same with Cody. He can pick an eighth of them in one hour, right? So I'm going to add these together to find out my total time that it takes them because I know they can take one of the time together in one hour. Okay, so this is how you set it up. What is my common denominator in this case? Yep, or the other way you could say this is I'm going to take a 6, an 8, and a T, right? I'm going to multiply it all by that. So if I take the first one times a 6, an 8, and a T, do the same thing for the second, a 6, an 8, and a T, and the same thing for the last. What can I cancel out of the first one? Six. So I'm left with eight T. How about the second one? An eight. I'm left with six T. And the last one, the T's cancel. So what's six times eight? Forty-eight. Now we can solve for T. Fourteen T equals forty-eight. And then what? Divide by 14. So T in this case would be 3.43 hours is how long it would take them to work on it together. Number 7 says it takes Alberto 10.5 hours to mop a warehouse and Molly can mop the same warehouse in 8.7 hours. How long would it take them if they worked together? So it's the same process. So Alberto, if I did it, he did this in one hour, what's his rate? One over 10.5. And Molly, 1.87 uh, over 8.7 over equals one over T. So my greatest common factor not my greatest common factor. My um, common denominator will be 10.5 times 8.7 times T. Okay? So I'm going to multiply each of these by that. Why do they use T? Because we don't know what T is. We need to... Oh, that's why I always put like a little loop D. Huh? Yeah. You're trying to find out. Oh, no, you can't. I don't think the mean works. No, if you add them together and divide by two, that doesn't work. I don't think it does. Try it. See what happens. Um, not in this case. Okay, so what can I cancel out here? Those ones, so I'm left with 8.7t, right? Plus, this one cancels here, so I'm left with 10.5t. And then equals, yeah, what are those? Okay, 91.35. So if I add these together, 10.5 plus 8.7, 19.2t equals 91.35, then divide. Okay, so t equals 4.76 hours, and that's how long it would take them to work together. Okay? So now, if you were to do the average like you were saying, yeah, you, you get 10.5 plus 8.7 divided by 2. 
That equals 9.6. Then divide that by 2 again. <laughs> then divide it by 2 again. But how would you know how to do that? <laughs> so you really do have to set it up this way. It's not the mean of the two of them. Okay? Let's look at 13. It says, working alone, Jimmy can mop a warehouse in 12 hours. One day his friend Amanda helped him, and it only took 5.45 hours. How long would it take Amanda to do it alone? So the only difference between this one and the other two is that they gave you the total already and you're finding an individual. Okay? So let's go to a new page. Jimmy can mop the warehouse in 12 hours, so I'm going to put 1 over 12. We are trying to find out how long it takes Amanda. We don't know, so I'm going to put 1 over A for Amanda. And the total that it takes them to do it together, to mop the warehouse together, is 5.45. Okay? So, our common denominator in this case will be 12 times 5.45 times T. Oh, A. Sorry, it should be A. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so used to using T's, I forget. Okay. So, let's multiply each of these by that. Amanda. Okay, so let's cross out what we have in common. We have a 12 here we can get rid of. We have an A here we can get rid of. And we have a 545 we can get rid of. So we're left with 5.45A equals 12 times 5.45, which is 65.4. Mm -hmm. Oops. It should be equals. It should be plus. 65.4. A decimal point there equals 12a yep you're going to subtract I, I would take the 5.45 from both sides that way we just have a positive a you could do it the other way too okay and when we do that we have 65.4 equals 6.55 a Now what? Yep, divide it by 6.55. When you do that, you get an A of about 9.98. So it takes Amanda close to 10 hours to, to mop the warehouse, right? Yeah, if you're, yeah, if you rounded it up, I would. Okay? So these ones are really, I mean, they look... Wicked because they're important problems. Nobody likes work problems. But they're not hard. Okay? It's really the other problem, the other worksheet that's hard. Okay? So you guys spend here is strategy for you. Spend as much time as you can tonight on the rational equation one. Okay? Then tomorrow when you guys get together, you can compare notes. If you get stuck on something, you guys can work together to get the answer. Okay? You no, know, Friday's our big test. Oh, so Friday's test is over everything we had on the quiz, and then this, today's lecture. There won't be, because I probably won't be here tomorrow. But use your, be smart about it. You guys took that quiz. You knew how hard it was. Be smart about it. Do the 